Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. Now, this is the silver chart overlaid with the WTI crude contract. And uh, this is kind of a rabbit hole, tinfoil hat sort of topic. But I wanted to explore this because it came up uh, from a comment on Dave Kranzler's site. And it really made me think about something I hadn't thought about before. So let's get an overview here of the sort of tinfoil hat thing there is with silver. Now, I point out many, many times that the uh, Bear Stearns top was the beginning of the financial crisis. It was when uh, silver spiked up to that new high price and Bear Stearns was carrying the majority of the silver shorts. They ended up going bust in their more, a couple of hedge funds in their mortgage portfolio. And then we had the crisis of silver uh, crashing, same sort of thing that we're seeing now with the uh, physical supplies not being available with the price falling. But uh, what I want you to look at here is kind of interesting is that this uh, performance of oil that happened at the same time was silver. Now, the other one here is this top that we had in silver. We know that that coincided with the capture of Osama bin Laden. This was the May smackdown and then the release of Obama's birth certificate. So silver, at least in my opinion, is connected to all these conspiracies. Uh, it's up to you how much importance you put to that. Uh, but there seems to be something there. The next one here is the Boston bombing smackdown. Very interesting. You can see the diversion that happened where silver got crushed, oil went up. But then the latest one we have here is this move down in oil that presaged this move, the next move down in silver. And you can see that oil has completely collapsed, crossed over, and is now rivaling the lows that we had you know, at the bottom of the financial crisis. So what's the speculation on that? Um, well, the speculation is that perhaps oil is being manipulated for the purpose of suppressing silver. And we'll dig further into that. But first I wanted to take a look at the platinum and palladium charts. Now, you know this story and I haven't had time to completely explore it. It's this story coming out with Volkswagen and Germany and potential massive penalties against them. And that's a really bizarre story. It doesn't really add up. There's a lot of problems with that story. But uh, if you look at this move here, now we know that platinum and palladium are the two most important uh, metals when we're talking about the catalytic converters. And you can see this bizarre set of moves that we have here. Uh, a drop down in palladium down to 520 and then a rally up to 660. Huge, crazy moves going on in the metal. And uh, let's go to the platinum chart. And platinum's been acting really crazy too. You can see that it made a bottom there around 925. That's Let's pull out to the weekly so you can see how far that goes. So that's a big uh, bottom for platinum. Uh, it's the lowest it's ever been except for the, just, you know, the very uh, height of the financial crisis. So platinum is really cheap right now. Is that connected to what's going on with Germany and this Volkswagen issue? I think it is, but I can't tell you how all those dots connect. This is actually a different rabbit trail I wanted to follow, though. So let's start out with Dave Kranzler's article, Is Silver Intentionally Being Drained and Diverted from the Retail System? Now, this is an interesting argument. He's basically hinting at the idea that the shortage that we're seeing in the retail market for coins in the US and in the Western system is actually because they have to deliver to India. They have to deliver to the East. They can't uh, tell them that, well, you're gonna have to wait on the metal. They, they can 
create a shortage and create lines here in the west but if they balk at delivering to the east there's a potential that the east may call their bluff so that's the theory and I'm not going to go into that theory you can read this article and he makes a lot of comments he's pretty bold talking about the Perth Mint. he says one last point when I see dubious representatives of institutions like the Perth Mint disingenuously attempting to dispel the fact that there's a silver shortage with long articles loaded with half-truths, distorted truths, and willful omission of facts, I begin to suspect the shortage is worse than is known. This is true regardless of whether or not the two theories proposed above hold true. So, uh, Dave Kranzler's not really pull pulling any punches lately. and uh, But the main thing I wanted to look at is this comment. Well, there's a comment from Charles Savoy. That's interesting. But the main comment I want to look at is this comment from Pete Devine. And this is what got me thinking about this idea. He says, great analytical deductions. If Sherlock Holmes existed, he'd add you to his finance team. A potential contender for large amounts of silver is India's demand for power. Since they don't have their own sources of energy, they are building a large solar power grid. I believe they embarked on the largest solar power plant in January 2014. Multiple utility companies building the solar plant set aside 23,000 acres of land. Its phase one is supposed to come online in 2016 with one gigawatt of power or gigawatt, however you pronounce that. Eventually, they'll grow to four gigawatts. The idea is to compete with imported power sources such as coal. These are the types of projects that could break the PM cartel. After Fukushima, Germany embarked on clean power as well. It's worth noting that Germany provides 75% of its power from solar and wind. Now, I didn't know that. Both technologies use a lot of silver. What I find interesting is that Germany's adoption rate of solar power decreased substantially in 2012. Interestingly, in 2011, Saudi Arabia announced they were embarking on a large solar project and had earmarked $1 billion for their solar project. The project was later delayed by eight years. Interesting. I can't help but wonder if silver was being consumed at a much higher rate than previously suspected. Is it possible that silver availability became so tight that the powers that be lowered oil and gas prices to levels in order to crush silver demand used in solar energy technologies? Could that be the true reason Iran was brought back into the energy community? to lower oil prices so that solar cannot compete. Just a conspiracy theory, but something to think about. So let's dig further into that. I've pulled up some articles here that give you an idea of how much solar, how much silver is needed in solar. And it's kind of shocking when you think about how much is needed for a one gigawatt of power. Let's read this. Silver and gold are compared to each other as both metals are viewed by investors as inflation hedges and safe haven investments. However, in addition to its characteristic as a safe haven investment, silver is widely used in industrial applications. It is used in the manufacture of semiconductors, solar photovoltaic cells and batteries, in the, the fabrication of jewelry and photography, and has a variety of applications in nanotechnology. With the rapid adoption of solar energy across the world, the demand for silver from the solar photovoltaic industry is expected to rise rapidly. In this article, we will take a closer look at the trends in the demand for silver by the solar PV industry. Silver has the highest electrical and thermal conductivity of all metals. This property of silver makes it an important constituent of solar cells. It is used in the form of silver paste, which is used to conduct electricity out of solar cells. Approximately 20 grams of silver are used in each crystalline silicon solar panel, which accounts for about 85% of the total market. 
roughly 80 metric tons of silver or approximately 2.8 million ounces of silver are needed to generate approximately one gigawatt of solar power. Globally installed solar capacity stood at 139 gigawatts at the end of 2013. Installed solar capacity has risen exponentially from a paltry 1.3 GW in 2000. Most of this growth in installed capacity in the past has come from Europe, particularly Germany. With favorable, favorable government policies facilitating the incorporation of a greater share of renewable energy into the country's energy mix. Europe accounted for around 75% of global installed solar PV capacity in 2010. However, the pace of new installed capacity in Europe is expected to slow down due to a reduction in incentives for PV installations in some major markets such as Germany. In recent years, China has made a push for greater PV installation. Chinese installed solar capacity has increased from 0.8 GW in 2010 to around 18 GW in 2013. China leads the way in terms of additions to installed PV capacity in 2013 with the installation of 11.3 GW of grid-connected solar PV capacity. This was followed by Japan, the U.S., and Germany with 6.9, 4.75, and 3.3 GW in addition to their installed solar capacity, respectively. Installed solar capacity is expected to grow by 20% this year, or around 44 GW. China, Japan, and the U.S. will be leading the way in terms of newly installed solar capacity with around 12, 10, and 6, respectively. The growth in installed solar PV capacity will be driven by China in the years to come. China is making concerted effort to reduce its dependence on coal as a source of energy. The country is targeting 70 GW in installed solar capacity by 2017 as compared to 18 in 2013. Thus, China thrust on solar energy will provide the impetus for growth in solar PV capacity additions. And it goes on. So that's very, very interesting that we're talking about uh, a large amount, 2.8 million ounces of silver for every gigawatt or gigawatt of power. And we're talking about a large number of those. How much of the silver supply is going to be used up? The sharp growth forecast for installed PV capacity bodes well for silver demand by the PV industry. If we assume that over the next five years, crystalline solar silicon panels will continue to account for roughly 85% of the market, then these will account for approximately 38 GW in installed capacity in 2014 and around 46 GW in installed capacity in 2018. Now, the big question that we need to ask is, these installed panels, how long are they good for? And if they're going to maintain that GW capacity, do they have to renew them with more silver? I think the answer is yes. We will estimate the demand for silver from the PV industry under the simplifying assumption that solar panels for incremental solar PV capacity additions are manufactured in the same year in which they are installed, taking into account roughly 2.8 million ounces of silver are required to generate 1 GW of solar power, the demand for silver translates into roughly 106 million ounces and 151 million ounces in 2014 and 2018, respectively. To put this into perspective, global silver mine production is expected to be roughly 800 million ounces and 750 million ounces in 2014 and 2018, respectively. Mine production accounted for roughly 75% of silver supply in 2012. Now, I've already shown you in uh, the last video that I did on the silver supply that uh, the recycling and the hedging is going down to zero. So we're going to be talking about 100% of the silver supply coming from mining. If we assume this ratio holds till 2018, overall silver supply will stand at roughly 1 billion ounces and 1 billion ounces in, in 2014-2018 respectively. Assuming a balanced market in which supply matches demand, the demand for silver from the solar PV industry will rise from 10% of the total demand for silver in 2014 to around 15% in 2018.
So those are the figures on that. Now, the question is, uh, does this person have any uh, reason to believe his theory is correct? I think there is. I think that when you look at the desperation by uh, U.S. authorities with pulling the stunt now they pulled with uh, Volkswagen, and I'm really surprised that the German authorities have not uh, just stood up and said, you know, you're not going to blackmail our industries. I think the threat and fine we saw was $18 billion. Now, if you remember the fine against uh, BNP Paribas, I think the U.S. fined, is that a French bank? I don't remember. Uh, but they, I think they fined that bank about uh, 8 or $10 billion dollars so it seems that the U.S. authorities are getting desperate. Uh, in my opinion, they're overplaying their hand. I'm really surprised that Germany hasn't come in and said, you know what, uh, we're not going to play your game anymore. Uh, we're not going to pay your fine. Uh, the, the whole thing is staged. It's phony. And uh, this is just an attempt to uh, extort money from us. We're going to go ahead and ramp up our solar production again and uh, ignore your fines. But that's not what's happening. So it seems that Germany and Japan are still lackeys or stooges of the United States. Um, did they drop the price of oil drastically here so that they could crush uh, solar PV demand? I think there's a 50% chance that might be correct. And we'll talk to you next time.